As you may know, as part of my rabbinic responsibilities for two weeks during the summer, I get to wear a t-shirt and shorts and run a basketball camp here at Sinai Temple. A lot of the campers are here this morning. Barry's a part of that camp. We call it high-level basketball and high-level values because every day we bring a different speaker, we do different social action projects. But the speakers are often related to either Jews who are involved within the sports communities or athletes who have an impact within the Jewish community and the state of Israel. Four weeks ago I read an article in the JNS, the Jewish News Service, about a former NBA player named Michael Sweetney who went to the Georgetown University, averaged 25 points a game in college, was the ninth NBA pick in the 2003 draft right behind LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony. The article was called Life on the Rebound, how Mike Sweetney just went to Israel and impacted his life. At the end of the article was his email, so I thought, what the heck? I sent him an email, and within a couple of minutes he wrote back, I said, can you come to Sinai Temple to share with us your life story about Israel? And surprisingly enough, he said, I'm busy right now, I'm at Camp Ramah. <laughs> he said, but I'll be there next week. He led the Ramah Basketball Academy in Camp Ramah in the Poconos for the last two years. He has just returned from a trip to Israel. He has been with Sinai Temple for the last three days. We had a Shabbat dinner last night with 70 of our, of our campers and their families. And to watch Mike interact and share his love of Israel now with our community, we're truly honored. And therefore, we invited Mike Sweetney of the New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls, and George Hoyes to share a bit about his experience in Israel. The microphone's too short. He's going to use this one. Shabbat Shalom. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody from Sinai, Sinai Temple uh, for inviting me out here. It's been um, amazing the past three days. And also, this is my first Shabbat service. So um, I'm kind of just sitting here, kind of having a surreal moment, taking this all in. So I'm, I'm very, very excited to be here. Um, I started off um, you know, playing in the NBA for four years. And throughout my basketball career, um, I met a lot of amazing people. And um, one of those amazing people is a guy named Tamir Goodman. Tamir Goodman, um, he was considered uh, the Jewish Jordan of uh, basketball. And um, he's been my friend for 20 years. And uh, for the past six years, he's been living in Jerusalem. And uh, he invited me out there to help run his basketball camp in the last, a couple weeks ago. And uh, my wife was like, uh, I don't know, she was very nervous about me going out there because what you see on the news here and what you know, Israel is betrayed as. And she was like, no, you know, I, I'm really nervous about you going. And so I said, you know what, Tamir's a great, sorry. Tamir, Tamir's a great friend of mine and um, I want to be there for him and I'm going to go. And uh, she just made, they make sure you check with the State Department. She was just going through a whole panic. <laughs> and um, so, uh, I, you know, I believe in Tamir. He's been a good friend for 20 years. And I went over there and it was nothing short of amazing, to say the least. Um, uh, when, we first, when I first arrived, we went to go visit the Western Wall. And when we got there, um, I'm watching Jews, Christians, and Muslims all just, I'm sorry, interact with each other. And it kind of, it, it, honestly, it, it blew my mind. I'm like, wow, on the news, you think that if a Muslim and Jew interact, it's going to be something, you know, not, not a great situation. And just watching everyone, and um, you know, people came to me and just started praying with me, praying for me, over me. And it was one of those moments that it really, really changed my life. And uh, we went to, um, we took a trip up north uh, to Haifa to run a um, basketball clinic for um, Nefesh Benesh. I hope I said it right. I, I kind of messed the words up a little bit. We ran a, a basketball clinic up there. It was about two hours away from Jerusalem. And um, so when we returned back from the trip, um, Tamir, so Tamir was exhausted. We were both exhausted. And he was about a mile away from his home. And um, so he said, hey, you know, we believe in when we have a friend or an associate walking them back to the home, you know, walking them back and making sure they're safe. Um, that's, that's something that we believe in. So he walked me back. And as we were walking back, it's 1030 at night. And I'm watching little kids playing in the park. I'm like, wow, this is different. And um, so I look and I'm seeing kids. I'm not seeing parents. And I said, so I asked him, I said, where are the parents? And he was like, oh, they're probably at home. And I just stopped. He was like, what's going on? I said, you don't understand. As a parent of, you know, eight-year-old, a six-year-old, a four-year-old, 
I take my kids to school every day. I pick them up. Um, if they go to the park, I'm there to watch them every step of the way. And, and I said, you know, you don't understand. The, you know, we always say that Israel's a dangerous place and it's not a good place to go, but what is really dangerous? You know, me as a parent, I go into a panic of just little things. And these kids are here walking to the store with their friends um, and just enjoying themselves. And it was just kind of like a surreal moment. And I immediately got back and I called my wife and I told her. And she thought out, she's like, there's no way. I said, no, I'm serious. And she's like, wow, we have to visit. So I just, you know, we we making sure that Israel is going to be a stop that we make every summer, hopefully sometime throughout the year. But uh, it's one of those places that it, it really just changed my life spiritually, the way I look at the world, the way I look at, you know, every human being. And um, I also just, I just want to leave with this note. Um, if anybody has not been there and he has any doubts about it, it's, it's a life-changing place and you must go. For me, it, it changed my life and I'm just happy that, you know, to be a part of it and I'm happy that the Jewish community has taken me and my family in for the past two years. It's been nothing but amazing. And I just want to say thank you for having me. So thank you. Three weeks in Israel and he only tried falafel for the first time last night at Shabbat dinner. <laughs> Mike will be here after services. Thank him for what he has done, not just as a basketball player, but more importantly as an advocate for the state of Israel. Truly been embraced by the Jewish people, and uh, we're happy to have Mike as part of our Sinai Temple family.